Hey, 42 here. Who wants to live forever? Well, Dracula, Voldemort, and an uber-rich tech entrepreneur called Brian Johnson, to name a few. Johnson is so dedicated to his quest to never die, he spends $2 million a year on something he calls Project Blueprint. Don't die is a religion. Don't die is an economic system. Don't die is, is a political system. My competitor is Jesus. It's a complex health and fitness regimen that includes perfectly normal activities like consuming exactly 1,977 calories each day, all by 11 a.m., collecting samples of his own feces for analysis, and sleeping with a tiny device strapped to his penis to monitor overnight erections. He even tried six blood plasma transfusions from teenagers, including a litre from his 17-year-old son. Thanks for the plasma. But Johnson is not the only one looking for the elixir of life in a lab. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is reportedly funding Altos Labs, a firm working with leading scientists to research the biology of age reversal. Just by bringing open chromatin to a closed chromatin, we can rejuvenate a cell. And how do we do that? Bezos and his fellow billionaire investors appear to believe that mortality is just another problem that they can solve with a truckload of cash. But it's often said that the only two certainties in life are death and taxes. The ultra-rich seem to have figured out how to avoid the tax part, so why not death too? The quest for immortality might sound like a pipe dream, and many experts believe it is, but there's still a lot we don't understand about why we grow old and die. But research into the hidden mechanisms of aging is opening up strategies that might help us postpone a visit from the Grim Reaper, or perhaps even put him out of business entirely. And now a quick ad from Adu. Adu is an all-in-one management software that provides entrepreneurs with a range of applications to simplify the day-to-day -day management of their businesses. During my time, I've used a bunch of different business applications that are all really pricey individually, so having them all under one roof with Adu is a game changer. And the best thing is that the first app is free for life, including hosting and support. And for me, that first app has to be a do project. I'm working on a few different videos every month, so I'm constantly juggling research, rabbit holes, scripts, filming, edits, thumbnails, and sponsor deadlines. But with a do project, I can build a detailed dashboard for each video with custom steps and tasks, which helps me so much to get on top of each project. Using the Kanban view, I can check the progress of each video in seconds, and I no longer get confused where I'm up to with each project. And I also really love that I can collaborate with my team directly within the task by attaching notes, files, or whatever I want. And remember, you can manage your projects for free with Adu's first app being free for life, including unlimited hosting and support. So no matter what project you need to get more control over, Adu's project app is just a no-brainer. Click the link in the description to try out Adu for yourself. So if you were a billionaire hoping to hack the biological clock, where would you start? Well, the first place to try would be an undetermined location off the coast of Maine. This is where George, one of the oldest lobsters ever recorded, is hopefully enjoying his 15th decade on planet Earth. George was briefly owned by the City Crab and Seafood Restaurant in New York, during which time he was estimated to be 140 years old. Pretty impressive considering he makes no effort whatsoever to monitor his overnight erections. Thanks to his remarkable age, George was spared the indignation of becoming just another lobster firmador and was released back into the ocean. His rescue sparked a fascinating conversation about aging. How is it that a humble crustacean boasts a lifespan that would make a neurotic tech entrepreneur green with envy? The answer lies with an enzyme called telomerase, but to understand exactly what it does, we first have to talk briefly about your DNA. Two intertwined chains forming a framework like a long spiral staircase. Whenever a cell divides, the chromosomal DNA it contains has to be duplicated. As you can probably imagine, it's a complicated process. First, the DNA double helix is unzipped into two separate strands by an enzyme called helicase. DNA is made from chemical building blocks called nucleotides. There are four types, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, and they always pair up in the same way. Adenine with thymine and guanine with cytosine. 
That's extremely handy because it allows another enzyme, DNA polymerase, to build two new DNA double helices simply by pairing up matching nucleotides. I say simply, but in reality, it's a gargantuan task. Every single time a cell divides, six billion base pairs must be replicated. It's estimated that around 20 million of your body's cells divide every second, meaning somewhere in the region of 120 quadrillion DNA base pairs are copied inside your cells every single second. And sheer scale isn't the only problem here. You see, because of the way DNA polymerase operates, it's unable to copy the very ends of any given strand of DNA. And it means that every single time your cells divide, a tiny amount of DNA is lost from the end of each of your chromosomes. That sounds pretty bad. But luckily, your body has an ingenious defense mechanism against this apparent loss of genetic information, the telomere. Telomeres are repeating strings of DNA base pairs that can be found at the end of each of your chromosomes. At first, they don't really seem to do anything. They don't code for proteins, they don't switch genes on or off, and they don't regulate anything. But that's actually kind of the point. Since they don't do anything critical, it doesn't matter if a few chunks get shaved off during cell division. Telomeres are essentially your DNA cannon fodder, whose sole purpose is to protect your real genetic soldiers from being gunned down by the end replication problem during cell division. But this sacrificial army of buffered DNA is not infinitely large. Every time your cells divide, your telomeres get shorter, and if they get too short, your precious genome could be at risk. When your cells become too damaged, either due to telomere shortening, or for some other reason, they enter a state called senescence. Senescence evolved as a way for the body to minimize the risks posed by old or damaged cells. If such genetically compromised cells are allowed to keep replicating, they can cause cancer and other diseases. The older we get, the shorter our telomeres get, and the more cells transition into senescence. But these zombie cells don't just sit there quietly minding their own business. They actively change the environment around them by releasing a noxious cocktail of signals and chemicals, ultimately triggering a chronic, low-level immune response that leads to persistent inflammation. And it's this slow burn immune activation that acts as a silent driver behind many of the diseases that we associate with aging, like arthritis, Alzheimer's, and heart failure. By the way, newborns burn through telomeres at a breakneck pace, roughly 1,000 base pairs per year until preschool, versus just 30 base pairs per year in adults. That means you technically did more telomeric aging before your fourth birthday than during your entire 20s. Also, the older a father is at the time of conception, the longer his kid telomeres will be. Even the age at which his dad had him affects the length of telomeres that the grandson will get. It's all a very complicated process, but the bottom line is this. Telomere shortening contributes to aging in humans and other animals, but not all animals. Because this is where George, the very old lobster's super secret weapon, comes into play. Telomerase is an enzyme that extends telomeres when they get too short, allowing them to continue protecting DNA from the end replication problem indefinitely. We also produce telomerase, but only in certain types of cells, like stem cells, that continue dividing throughout our lifetimes. Everywhere else, our telomerase is switched off. Since lobsters have an abundant supply of system-wide telomerase, they have largely eliminated telomere-related senescence and its associated aging effects. That goes at least some way to explaining why lobsters live so long and why they don't appear to slow down, weaken, or lose fertility with age. They aren't immortal, but they don't appear to die of old age like humans do. Okay then, it's time for the $2 million question. What does all of this mean for the likes of Brian Johnson? And, well, the rest of the human race. You can probably see where all of this is going. With a bit of nifty biohacking, we should be able to use telomerase to artificially lengthen our telomeres, and just like gorgeous George, 
eliminate a key contributor of aging. But unfortunately, as always, there's a catch. In 2023, the John Hopkins Medical Group studied 17 individuals who have naturally long telomeres thanks to a genetic mutation in a gene called POT1 that basically allows telomerase to run wild. On the plus side, the study participants displayed some obvious signs of delayed aging, including delayed greying of the hair. But on the not so plus side, they also appeared to have a significantly increased risk of developing both malignant and benign tumors compared to the general population. And this is the double-edged sword of telomere extension. Making cells functionally immortal does appear to slow aging, but it also allows cells to continue dividing for longer, meaning potentially dangerous genetic mutations are able to accumulate. For this reason, telomerase is forced to play an important role in the formation of 90% of tumors in humans. Put simply, more telomerase keeps you younger, but it also gives you cancer. Interestingly though, the same doesn't seem to be true for lobsters. They do get cancer, but for reasons we still don't entirely understand, it seems to be very rare. Okay, so none of this is sounding very promising for making Brian Johnson immortal, but all is not lost. In 2024, a team of scientists from the University of Texas carried out another study into the effects of telomere extension on aging. In the John Hopkins study, the participants had naturally long telomeres in all of their cells thanks to the POT1 mutation. But in this new study, scientists used genetic tools to temporarily activate telomere lengthening telomerase in targeted cells, specifically in the brain and muscle tissues. The experiment was carried out on mice rather than humans, but the results were incredible. This controlled time-limited activation of telomerase produced a host of anti-aging benefits, including increased muscle function and reduced inflammation. It even boosted cognitive performance and triggered the creation of new neurons in the brain. Put simply, it appeared to physically reverse some of the signs of aging. And the best part is, in these early trials, the researchers didn't see any increase in tumor formation whatsoever. It's all still very early days, but if these results can be replicated in humans, we might have a genuine miracle drug on our hands. One that can keep us younger, longer. Human immortality is probably still some way off, Sorry, Brian. But with a little help from George the Lobster, a meaningful lifespan and health span extension could be just around the corner. Now that would be a game changer for all of mankind. And hopefully, we won't even have to take samples of our own shit. Thanks for watching.